here's my analysis of the number 10 Baylor versus Iowa State men's basketball game. Baylor lost this game 78-72. They had a 41-38 lead at half. Second half, Baylor allowed 41 points while only scoring 30. But I'm going to say this, that the officiating in this game was so beyond questionable by John Higgins and staff. Seriously. It, and here's the deal. They allowed so much physicality, somebody's going to get hurt. Dale Bonner got fouled when he fell in the first half at the very end. They didn't call anything. On the drives, they're going to call some something. I mean, they don't want to call anything. And yet, on the other end, little contact, they they fouled. They call that a foul? Come on, man. You got to call on both ends of the floor here. I mean, you can't either the both fouls or no fouls. Somebody had, has to do something about this officiating. And Iowa State's number 322 in the country and committed fouls per game. Its opponents are usually in a double bonus in both halves of the games. Like, seriously. That's just a throw out a team stat. Iowa State for the game shot. 49.2% from the field, 30 for 61 overall, 8 for 21 on threes, 38.1%, 10 for 14 on free throws, 71.4%, 44 rebounds today, 21 offensive, 15 assists, 9 steals, 6 blocks, 14 turners, 15 fouls, and they had 10 points off the bench. Baylor only had 7. They shot 45.1% from the field, 23 for 51 overall, 14 for 29 on threes, 48.3%. 12 for 13 on free throws, 92.3%. 17 rebounds, 5 of those offensive. That has to be addressed immediately. The rebounding. We got killed on the glass. 12 assists, 9 steals, 2 blocks, 11 turnovers, which is a lot better than last time and the time before. But 18 fouls, some of that was just questionable stuff and, of course, a little bit of foul concern. But Adam Flagler had 14 points. On three for 11 shooting, one for six on threes. He has to be better going forward. Seven for eight on free throws. Like, sure I mentioned that. Three rebounds, four of those, off, four assists, three steals, two turnovers, two fouls. LJ Cryer had 10 points on three for 10 shooting, three for five on threes, one for one on free throws, one rebound, two assists, three turnovers, one foul. Keontae George had 11 points on three for 11 shooting, three for nine on threes. Two for two on free throws, four rebounds, two assists, two steals, three turnovers, five fouls. Flo Thamba, two points on one for three shooting, and he had only a block and three fouls. He did not record a single rebound. Baylor plays better when Flo Thamba is better on the rebounding. Come on, man. Jim Bridges, he had a great game. Career high, 28 points on 10 for 11 shooting. Sent for eight on threes, five rebounds, th two as offensive, two assists, three steals, one turnover, three fouls. Caleb Lohner had two points on one for one shooting and two fouls. Jonathan Chama Chachua, no points on over for one shooting, one foul. Dale Bonner, five points on two for four shooting, over for one on threes, one for one on free throws, two rebounds, two assists, one steal, one block, two turnovers, one foul. Now, Iowa State has the winner of Kansas and West Virginia, which is going to go on right now, or it's already finished by the time you watch. But I'm going to assume Kansas beats West Virginia. I'm sorry, West Virginia subscribers. I'm sorry. I just think what Kansas is going to win. And Iowa State, you're not going to get that whistle like you had today. We're swallowing their whistles like they did the last two times against you when Baylor played against you. Seriously. You're going to learn that the hard way in not only next game against Kansas, but the NCAA tournament. They're not going to allow all that physicality. But as for Baylor, we got the NCAA tournament. Now, here's the danger. Baylor could be a three seed. Depending if Kansas State makes a deep run in the Big 12 tournament or even Marquette. 
I mean, this is just a bad matchup for us. Iowa State has length. And they play great. They have the best defense in the Big 12. It's just tough, though, to play them back-to-back -back times. And now we're over in three against them. But here's the good news. We won't have to play Iowa State again. But it does give me concern if we play a good defense or even, like, a team with length. It does concern me with that because, clearly, length affects us. That's the way it is this year. And we can't have Flo Thumba no show. And jo Jonathan Chomwa Chachua had no rebounds, too. So, we had zero rebounds out of the five position. That can't happen going forward. It can't. It really, really can't. You can't have Keontae George, LJ Cryer, and Adam Flagler combined done for 31 for the game. You can't have that ha occur. And we have to get Dale, ba I mean, we have to get Langston Love back from that eye injury, scratched eye. He would make a difference. He would. I just think at this point, why not play Josh Ujuwuna ahead of Caleb Bloner? Or try to throw in a big body like that. I get it, he's a freshman, but you gotta do something in terms of rebounds here. And the hope is to have Langston Love cleared by Sunday or Monday. And it's very, very unfortunate now that Baylor has 10 losses on the season and 22 wins. In Iowa State, you're going to not have get a favorable whistle again for a while. If you're lucky. Seriously. The way you play is to get somebody hurt. Either incidentally or on purpose it doesn't really matter you get away with so much stuff that it's like come on somebody call a foul on that but I give props to Iowa State it's not because of the refs on this game it's not second half Baylor didn't shoot the ball efficiently enough they didn't get enough stops they had close to a double digit lead a few times and they couldn't never get to that point I would say his defense just clamped down. They couldn't stop Jalen Bridges, though. But, seriously, we have to be better. Baylor has to be better going forward. Because now I'm concerned that we could bounce out of the second round of the NCAA tournament. Right now. It wouldn't shock me. We're just not in the Final Four team. We're not. Maybe we're Elite Eight. Maybe. If we could get there. Maybe offensively we could with the certain matchups, of course. It just depends. And we're going to have to know who our opponent is on Sunday. And, but we got to get through that first opponent first. It's just not the best way to finish out the season. I mean, you lost back-to-back -back games to Iowa, Iowa State in March. And lost. you beat Oklahoma State and beat Texas, but you lost to Kansas State and Kansas on the road. And prior to that, you played good. I mean, with only like from that Kansas State loss in the first game at home, you win like one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, you won the last six. Okay, only lost one game until that Kansas game. And I was in Texas on the road. And we got revenge against Texas. But that's still besides the point. It just seems like we need to be doing something better. I, at least the turnovers got cut down. And we played better against Iowa State today than the previous two times. But still, good, better is not good enough to not win a game. Because normally when you have somebody who goes off for 28 points or a career high like that, you win the game. You just can't. 
It's a matchup problem. Teams with length. They give Baylor issues. It's not a secret. It really, it really isn't. Just gotta hit the reset button and get ready for the, the NCAA tournament. And we'll see who we play against. Anyways, if you like this content, hit like and subscribe. And see you guys later. It's five and subscribers. We're on the road to it. Let's go.